Congress amends the U.S. Shipping Act, broadening FMC regulatory authority. The Federal Maritime Commission Authorization Act of 2017 was signed into law by President Donald Trump on December 4, 2018, marking the first substantive revision to the U.S. Shipping Act since 1998 and providing several of the most significant changes to the Shipping Act since 1984. The substantive change to the Shipping Act primarily address antitrust issues related to recent consolidation in the maritime industry and the emergence of ocean carrier alien. The amended Shipping Act signal an important development for the maritime industry in the U.S. It is aimed at preserving competition in U.S. trade and assuring future capital investment in maritime and transportation infrastructure, the vital link in supply chains across the U.S. and the world. President Donald Trump, with bipartisan support, signed into law the Federal Maritime Commission Authorization Act of 2017 on December 4, 2018 as part of the Frank Lobiondo Cross Court Authorization Act of 2018. The Act represents the first substantive revision to the U.S. Shipping Act 46 since 1998 and includes several of the most significant change to the Shipping Act since 1984. The principal change to the Shipping Act primarily address antitrust issues related to recent consolidation in the maritime industry and the emergence of ocean carrier alien. These changes are expected to help protect marine terminal service providers as well as other U.S. marine equipment and services providers, and to preserve investment in domestic shoreside maritime infrastructure. History of the Shipping Act Enacted in 1916, the Shipping Act Converse Authority opened the Federal Maritime Commission FMC, to regulate maritime commerce in the U.S. The Shipping Act regulates common carriers, both non-vessel and vessel operating, and marine terminal operators MTO, and affords limited antitrust protection to file agreement among regulated parties. In 1984, the Shipping Act was revised to eliminate a long-standing requirement for affirmative FMC approval of agreement and the requirement for carriers to file tariff with the FMC. Pursuant to the 1984 amendment, parties may file agreement with the FMC, which become effective 45 days after filing unless, in the interim, the agency obtained injunctive relief in court to block the agreement. Carriers now publish tariffs rather than filling them with the FMC. The last amendment to the Shipping Act occurred in 1998 as the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 1998. Following a five-year study of the effect of the Shipping Act on maritime trade and commerce, the 1998 amendment allowed carriers and shippers to enter confidential rate agreement providing discounted rate in exchange for cargo volume commitment. In 2005, the FMC issued a regulatory ruling extending authority to non vessel operating common carriers to enter such confidential rate agreement with shipper. After 1998 amendment, the maritime industry experienced significant and widespread consolidation. In addition to carrier mergers and acquisition concentrating the bulk of container ship capacity in U.S. trade for fewer than a dozen large carriers, the formation of vessel carrier alliance caused further substantial consolidation. Currently, there are three major carrier alien representing 80% of all container trade. Within the alien, there has been further consolidation. The creation of Ocean Network Express by the merger of Japanese carriers. In 2017, Congress began serious effort to review and amend the Shipping Act to address this change to the maritime industry. 
all of which have evicted U.S. infrastructure investment. The legislative effort represents the first step toward fostering the U.S. maritime industry. Significant revision to the Shipping Act the newly enacted Federal Maritime Commission Authorization Act of 2017 amends key sections of the Shipping Act, particularly in the areas of competition regulation and remedies for violation of the Shipping Act's antitrust provision. Ocean Transportation Intermediary OTI licensure requirement and adjustment to filling requirement. Each of these topics is discussed in further detail. Regulation of competition in ocean carriage. The Act amends multiple sections in the Shipping Act with the design of prohibiting anti-competitive behavior that would have a material adverse effect on U.S.-based maritime infrastructure and marine services and equipment providers. Section 703 requires the FMC to conduct an analysis of the impact on competition for the purchase of certain covered services by alien of ocean common carriers on annual basis. This statutory mandate is intended to promote active FMC oversight of the ocean carrier alliance to ensure that U.S.-based infrastructure interests are not unfairly disadvantaged. Section 704 focuses open alliance impact on certain covered services with respect to a vessel, the berthing or bunkering of the vessel, the loading or unloading of cargo to or from the vessel to or from a point on a wharf of terminal, the positioning, removal or replacement of boys related to the movement of the vessel and towing vessel services provided to such a vessel. The definition of certain covered services is noteworthy given that it generally covers those services that Ocean Carrier Alliance member procure at U.S. Marine Terminal. Section 709 utilizes this term is prohibiting ocean carriers from negotiating for certain covered services with MTO in violation of antitrust laws or in a manner inconsistent with the purposes of the Shipping Act. The Act prohibits ocean carriers from engaging in excessively anti-competitive strategies when collectively negotiating with terminal service providers. This provision is designed to protect MTO by avoiding a situation where MTO and other service providers are forced to negotiate with the carriers acting collectively with such a concentration of bargaining power that rates are pressured to unsustainable levels. Level.